Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on which time zone you are uh, joining us from this morning. My name is Ari Noguchi, and I will be serving as the moderator for this session this morning. Welcome to Advocating for Basic Income Guarantees on the Local Level, Perspectives from France and Germany, and... Um, just a couple of opening uh, remarks before we get started. The, this session is brought to you with the generous support of our sponsors, the Gerald Huff Fund for Humanity, Humanity Forward Foundation, Aid Kit, and Steady. Um, and before we begin, I just want to give a very quick overview on how to use Crowdcast. If you'd like to submit a question to the speakers, um, please post it in Ask a Question. Um, that'll, you'll see that at the very bottom of your screen. Um, and you can also vote on questions that um, have been already posted by other attendees, and that'll just bring the question to the top. Um, there's also a chat box that we invite you to use um, avidly. And, um, and uh, that's it. So that's kind of my opening remarks. Uh, I'd like to introduce you quickly to the... Uh, speakers, the panelists this morning. Um, first, we have, uh, sorry, um, Olaf uh, Michael Ostertag from Germany um, and uh, born in 1969, lives in Berlin. Um, he's an actor, director, and comedian. Uh, and also a tax accountant. He's uh, one of the founding members of Basic Income, uh, the working group uh, within the political party Die Linke um, on the left. Um, and he is also a member of the local parliament uh, in Berlin. Um, or was from 2011 to 2021. Um, we have a video that Olaf is going to introduce from uh, Mayor Simone Lang uh, from Finsburg in Germany. Um, and uh, I'll let Olaf say a little bit about that when we're about to uh, stream the video. Um, we have Eva Jacob um, from the University of Strasbourg in France. Uh, Eva is uh, a PhD in economics at Beta, which is the largest laboratory in Grand Est in France. Um, and her thesis is, follows the topic, a new social protection based on basic income. Um, and, she, uh, and she's very interested in basic income, social justice, philosophy, economics, and inequalities. Um, and Mary Bogle uh, in, um, joins us uh, from, the, from the U.S. Uh, Metropolitan Housing Community Policy Center at the Urban Institute. She is a nationally recognized thought leader on two-generation policy and practice, as well as an expert on cash-based social policies. Um, and, uh, and she'll be providing, in contrast, uh, the U.S. experience uh, from mayors especially. All right. So without further ado, um, and I did want to just mention that um, Olaf is uh, going to be uh, a voice and um, uh, because uh, we're having issues with video, but um, he, his voice is vibrant and, uh, and very engaging. So we do hope that you will enjoy the session this morning. Um, and Olaf, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and that was really uh, flattering. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's say first that I would like to say something about Germany. Uh, Germany, in Germany, all major political parties are opposed towards the basic income, and that is despite the fact that the surveys regularly show a majority of the population in favor of it. It ranged from 51%, which INSA, uh, the Research Institute, found out in 2018, up to 73% uh, in favor of a basic income, which YouGov found out in 2016. Following that, there is a vast variety of grassroots activism in Germany to move the debate forward. The most successful one in influencing the public opinion is the Mein Grundeinkommen DE movement, which was founded by Michael Bohmeyer in 2014. 
By collecting donations, this organization has been able to hand out over 1,000 times an unconditional basic income in the amount of 1,000 euro times 12 months. So it has been paid for one year per person, which adds up to over 12 million euro given unconditionally to random people who each had to sign up for it. And that was that, no strings attached. While this does not really qualify as a pilot project, the organizers now collaborate with the German Institute for Economic Research, DIW, to perform a monitored pilot that will hand out 1,200 euro per month to 120 people over a span of three years. Other projects have also emerged from that initiative, such as the Volksentscheid Bund and Common Group, which aims to have a public vote in the city of Berlin to introduce yet another pilot project there. Which points to a fact that is a major obstacle to campaigning for a basic income in Germany. Unlike Switzerland, Germany does not allow nationwide public referenda. So only on the municipal level and only sometimes on the state level, there is even a chance for the public to have a say in this. <coughs> and Due to the German tax code, which in that respect is quite similar to the US one, there are only so few options for a municipality to levy taxes on its own. To introduce a UBI that exceeds the capacity of a pilot program, it has to be introduced nationwide, while the only level that it can, get, can be advocated for effectively is the municipal level. It really seems to be a catch-22 here. That is why my organization, the Netzwerk Grundeinkommen, is discussing how to get mayors involved. We have been inspired by looking at the mayors for a GI network, and some of us consider this an option to move the discussion forward. While it really is a demanding task to approach sitting mayors to come out of the closet, we can see that there is a lot of conscience about a UBI since the politicians on the local level come across the social challenges their citizens face daily. The issue sometimes reaches the state level. For example, a three-party coalition in the state of Schleswig-Holstein, where our colleague Simone Lange is in office, agreed in a formal contract to introduce pilots within their term. They did not deliver. Not a single pilot was introduced before their term expired. In the city of Berlin, the former coalition government merely used the term unconditional basic income to introduce a scheme that not only was overly targeted, but also attached the payment to a willingness to work under explicitly unpleasant conditions, which only shows that the popularity of the term is recognized by politicians and often inspires them to hijack it for a completely different agenda. Which makes us even more think that we should have only a few, but in that respect much, much more reliable and competent mayors like Simone Lange, to participate in establishing a mayors for a GI network in Europe. And now that is what she will be saying here. She, as the mayor of the city of Flensburg, applied for being a part of this pilot program and was denied. And she is backing the basic income, for has been for, so for a long time, and she is willing to collaborate with mayors all over the world to form and expand that network. So that would be the time. To show her video. Okay, I can go ahead and do that. Ein herzliches Moin aus dem sonnigen Flensburg nach Portland in Oregon an alle Teilnehmerinnen und Teilnehmer der 20. Big Conference. Danke für die Einladung und ich bedauere es sehr, nicht live dabei sein zu können. Als Oberbürgermeisterin der nördlichsten kreisfreien Stadt in Deutschland befürworte ich das bedingungslose Grundeinkommen und ich beteilige mich sehr, sehr gerne und, und auch schon sehr, sehr lange diesbezüglich an verschiedenen Netzwerken und ich beteilige mich sehr gerne an internationalen Netzwerken von Bürgermeisterinnen 
und Bürgermeistern. In Deutschland wird das bedingungslose Grundeinkommen seit vielen Jahren immer wieder diskutiert. Welche Chancen bietet es, aber auch welche Risiken? Ich bin der Auffassung, dass es große Chancen bei der Entbürokratisierung und massiven Vereinfachungen sozialer Absicherungen bietet und vor allem bei der Entstigmatisierung von Sozialtransferempfängerinnen. Auf kommunaler Ebene können wir als Kommune und kann ich als Oberbürgermeisterin vor allem nur informieren und anregen und mich, so wie wir es jetzt tun wollen, mit Ihnen, mit euch vernetzen. Vor Ort in Flensburg gibt es eine große Bereitschaft, das Thema bedingungsloses Grundeinkommen zu diskutieren. Wir haben uns hier in der Stadt zuletzt 2018 mit den Menschen unserer Stadt auseinandergesetzt. Wir haben zu einer großen Bürgerinformationsveranstaltung eingeladen. Seinerzeit waren über 400 Menschen gekommen, um mit uns in verschiedenen Panels über das Thema zu diskutieren. Neben der reinen Information können wir als Kommunen auch bei den Regionen, in Deutschland sind das die Länder, und auf der Bundesebene, also bei den Nationen, Pilotprojekte organisieren und durchführen. Die Parteien unserer Landesregierung hatten einmal vereinbart, neue Modelle der sozialen Absicherung zu untersuchen, wie zum Beispiel das bedingungslose Grundeinkommen. Als Kommune hatten wir uns seinerzeit beim Land Schleswig-Holstein dafür eingesetzt, für die Durchführung eines Feldversuchs zur Erprobung des bedingungslosen Grundeinkommens in Flensburg. Leider erfolglos. Es liegt nun an uns und an unserer Vernetzung, das Thema weiter zu verfolgen, zu vertiefen und vor allem im Gespräch zu halten. Als Oberbürgermeisterin der Stadt Flensburg mit etwa 100.000 Einwohnerinnen und Einwohnern bin ich sehr gern bereit, es weiter zu diskutieren, damit wir zum richtigen Zeitpunkt auch die richtigen Antworten finden. Denn unsere Sozialsysteme müssen vor dem Hintergrund der sich ständig ändernden Rahmenbedingungen immer wieder neu gedacht werden. Und das bedingungslose Grundeinkommen ist für mich ein sehr wesentlicher Bestandteil dieser Debatte. Ich wünsche Ihnen allen eine sehr anregende Konferenz. Ich hoffe, dass wir uns bald auch einmal live sehen können. Und ich gratuliere der Konferenz auch zu ihrem 20. Geburtstag. Herzliche Grüße, Ihre Simone Lange. Ah. Thank you for that. Um, sorry for a little bit of the tech difficulties. Eva, I wonder if you could talk to us now a little bit about the perspectives from France. So, yes, of course. So, first of all, I would like to say that I'm really pleased to take part in this session today. So, as I'm French, I will approach a French perspective to give insights into what is going on in France regarding basic income. So, first, to give you some context, basic income has been popularized in France with Benoît Hamon, the socialist candidate, in the 2017 presidential election. So he made the proposition of basic income the core of his campaign. But unfortunately, uh, Benoît Hamon didn't win the election. And actually, uh, this campaign led to the first historical lowest score of the Socialist Party in a presidential election. So it was about 6.3% of the voices, which is really, really low for the Socialist Party. But despite this political failure, the idea of basic income didn't disappear in France. 
In fact, in October 2018, 18 French departments proposed a bill to the Parliament to experiment with basic income. Um, to propose this bill, they made a citizen, uh, citizen consultation first, and then they proposed this bill. Among all these departments, in 2021, the Department of uh, Loire-Atlantique and Gironde launched two different programs experimenting uh, with what we call a youth income as an answer to the COVID-19 crisis. So this program targets precarious young people who usually do not have access to safety net in France. And these young people uh, faced as well a lot of difficult time because of the lack of jobs due to the COVID-19 crisis. We also have the city of Lyon that is uh, offering a youth income. And we have two other departments, the Haute-Garonne and the Meurthe Moselle that are considering experimenting with a basic income for youth. So from these examples, we can deduce that there are like two uh, main types of strategy in France to support basic income at the local level from a politician perspective. So first, politician can organize citizen consultation. So the objectives are twofold. Introduce basic income to the population and collect citizen thoughts on basic income. I think it's a way to make basic income more understandable while considering the population's opinion on basic income. And I think that could lead to create new perspective and create an atmosphere of trust between citizens and politicians. The second strategy that is used in France is experimenting with basic income. I think it's a good way to support basic income since it allows to demonstrate the potential results of a basic income in the context of an experimentation. But I think that experimenting with basic income is not enough. And I suggest that to support basic income at the local level, but even at the national level, it is important for politicians to be backed up by researchers in order to make the population confident about the project and to show that basic income is more than just a political question. Thanks to this type of collaboration, I think it would be easier for politicians to publicly express their support for the basic income, and at the same time, working with academics will lead to the creation of a trustful design for a pilot and produce strong results on the impact of basic income on some microeconomic indicators as well-being or health education. Last but not least, we can't talk about basic income in France without focusing on its most famous program that is affiliated with basic income. It's the guaranteed social minimum in the city of Grand Centre. So this program is more like a mean tested than a universal transfer, but the program at least offers the advantage of ensuring a decent minimum income to everyone, uh, which follows the logic of a basic income. So it consists clearly in completing the actual income of people living under the poverty line to reach this poverty line. What is interesting with the city of Grand Saint is that we already have some preliminary results on the impact of the program on individuals. So the main result of the experiment is that it showed that exper expenditure is mostly oriented towards uh, basic needs like uh, first um, first expense is for food then following by housing closing leisure and debt requirement so to conclude we can state that basic income is a flourishing idea in france that is being more and more debated and that is presented as a future uh, potential policy tool but it still needs to be tested and debated and presented to the population so thank you Thanks so much, Eva. Um, so we have two different perspectives from two different countries in Western Europe, um, both at, at various stages of um, uh, their journey to policy, some already uh, at least at the local level, um, kind of uh, in policy mode. So Mary, I would love to bring um, you into the conversation to really um, kind of uh, compare and contrast um, the 
these these movements um, in uh, Germany and France, and especially kind of the the role of municipalities and mayors um, in that respect. So you have the floor. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Can, can you all hear? Oh, good, good, good. Um, hi, I'm Mary Vogel from the Urban Institute. Uh, I conduct a number of evaluations on municipal uh, pilots uh, for guaranteed income in the United States, as well as I'm serving as the lead for the implementation study of the experiment going on in California. Um, <clears throat> through the uh, child, the department, the California Department of uh, Social Services. Um, one of the things that strikes me about the presentations we just heard in terms of what's going on on a municipal level here in the U.S. is the similarities. Uh, I, you know, like most Americans, I think I think of the European landscape is like the Scandinavian countries. Uh, and I do know that there's a great deal more robust safety net for things like childcare and things like that in France. But I'm realizing that France and Germany, and I did know this, but it, Americans have a tendency to be bad geographically. Uh, so we can't lump all the countries together because I think the Scandinavian countries are way ahead of even other European countries and saying, you know, there's a guaranteed basic welfare state that should be provided. I think challenges like the you know diversification of their populations with refugees and immigrants is creating some of the same stigmatizing and you know truly um, unfortunate issues that we've always had here in the United States with our safety net, which is really it's a misnomer to call the American system um, a safety net. It's really a sticky web with a bunch of holes in it. Um, which is why I think the Mayors for Guaranteed Income, which is a large coalition of, I think it exceeds at least 50 cities now, um, is has banded together because in the United States, and I think Olaf made this point, the mayors see the people at the local level. They see um, what we have as an affordable housing crisis. We have a terrible affordable housing crisis in this country. Um, and in, unfortunately, uh, low-income people and people of color are the most housing burdened. Uh, there are neighborhoods in the in Washington D.C. where the lowest income so has a 50 percent. What is very typical for the lowest income people to have a fifth of their income having to go to housing costs, which is enormous housing burden. So I think what the mayors are are seeing and doing is is not only experimenting with guaranteed income here in this country, but they're banding together to make a you know to socialize the case at the local level in order to reach state governments and ultimately the federal government, which is the only um, real, truly redistributive force in the country that could uh, guarantee an income, a basic income to folks. One of the things before I close this part of my remarks is to sort of say that um, one of the, we have to be clear about terms in all these discussions. Universal basic income, the, that idea is for everybody. Uh, you and I would get a universal, Bill Gates in the United States would get a universal, if it was truly universal. Uh, the only place in the world necessarily that has that is the, actually the Alaska dividend. So ironically, the United States may be sponsoring one of the, the, the few universal income, basic income pilots ever or programs ever. Um, otherwise, what we're mostly talking about is minimum income experiments or guaranteed basic income which are very population based and most of the municipal, in fact, all of the, I would say all the municipal experiments are population based. They're fairly means tested. Um, you have to be under a certain level of average median income to even qualify. They're very small. They're just small groups of people relative to the entire population of a city. That's for sure. Um, and they're, they're, they're smaller. They're like 500 to a thousand dollars a month typically and they're time limited. They last for about a year. I'm involved in evaluating a pilot in Austin, which I think is different than most at this point. I'm excited about it because it's um, um, a little longer. It's about 14 months. We're going to do some um, testing beyond the 14 months to see the sustainability. But it's also sponsored by the city council using general funds. Um, the recent uh, Biden um, rescue package funds cannot be used. This is what, again, we have all these traps and cliff effects and horrible things in our safety net 
where, uh, and this is an example, is the rescue funds that have been given out for pandemic relief cannot be given um, in a way that, that uh, is in addition to public benefits people may have, like food stamps is a fairly common public benefit. In fact, 70% of the pe people who are on food stamps in this country also work. So there's an enormous population on food stamps. It's still a very meager benefit. But if you were to take a guaranteed income, even in a pilot, the, the city cannot use its relief funds to um, give you that income. Uh, instead, what we see with Mayors for Guaranteed Income and most of the experiments across the country, it's local philanthropy that's funding these. Even the, even most of the mayors and the Mayors of Guaranteed Income pilots do not provide um, municipal funds. Austin is different. The city council has used general funds and you see DC moving in this direction too, where there's some taxation going on for baby bonds, uh, advancing the EITC, which goes in that minimum income category. Um, so I'll stop there uh, with my remarks, but I, I think it's important to, to keep these distinctions in mind. Ultimately, the, the issue is about coalition building and socializing a population to the point where they will demand from the federal and national levels that there be some kind of guaranteed income that doesn't stigmatize the people receiving it. Thanks so much. Um, maybe what we can do now is invite, um, Olaf, I know you're still having issues with um, video, so um, we will keep you in our minds. Um, but uh, Ava, maybe you can come back on video uh, as we um, kind of talk through some of the questions. Um, I have a few and I also invite um, the, those of you who have joined us uh, in Crowdcast to also ask some questions as well. Um, my first question is, as we think about the three nations that are really being featured here, um, I am especially curious about um, something that Mary just um, alluded to, which is the unique role of mayors um, and how they're interacting with local efforts, be it um, municipally led or not, um, and, and how mayors are being brought into the process, and then also whether or not they're finding each other um, in this kind of coalition building effort. Uh, so I know that's a two-part question, but um, you know, I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the unique uh, role of mayors, especially as we saw the um, beginning video uh, of um, Mayor uh, Simone, was it? Um, so wherever, yes, however you want to um, respond. Well, Eva, if you don't wish to address this first, <laughs> then I would then I would like to say that uh, there have been uh, at some point uh, mayors of several political parties, especially the Social Democrats, just as is with the uh, Democrats in the U.S. Uh, I think there was the question that the mayors for AGI do not have one single Republican mayor yet. <laughs> Um, but we do have uh, um, mayors from uh, various political parties that have come out in favor, but they do not find each other. So if the second part of your question, that's what uh, the, uh, the position where we could step in and we like to step in, uh, network basic income, uh, to uh, get them uh, introduced to what is possible if you come uh, uh, across party lines. So um, we are not quite there yet. Uh, we are still working on uh, something, and we're very proud to have uh, been successful to get Mayor Simone Lange to uh, being interested in that, because she also published a book in favor of basic income, and she's been sitting mayor for five years now, and she's quite popular in her city, and uh, her voice is heard in Germany if she says something. So uh, perhaps we can follow up to that. And uh, the other thing is that many, many grassroots activists uh, are on their local level and 
they face opposition by their mayors. So perhaps they can uh, come forward and uh, say, let's do what the other mayors do and uh, stop uh, opposing the idea. But I would like to uh, give a question back to Mary, uh, because I always uh, was wondering about uh, what is the connection between the targeted and the limited and the uh, uh, means-tested programs that are being introduced and uh, the final goal of introducing a universal basic income. So is there that final goal or is there no connection at all? Because that's what we as uh, Netzwerk Grund Einkommen in Germany would like to stress that there is some kind of a final goal where uh, everyone, even uh, Mr. Gates, receives it. And what do you think they say or think about this? How is this discussed? I don't, I think that in the United States it's interesting because I don't think, I think, you know, our politicians, it's a little bit like herding cats, even though there's a coalition, mayors for uh, guaranteed income. They haven't come out for something like universal basic income. To tell you the truth, universal basic income is not a popular concept necessarily in the United States. Part of it is the cost. Part of it is people don't think Bill Gates needs it. I don't think I need it. What I think most people, and it's interesting because it's ironically a very conservative idea at base, is a minimum income that says instead of getting these messed up in-kind benefits that conflict with each other, have different eligibility rules, is why don't we just use the tax system, the child tax credit be a good case, it lifted a lot of children out of poverty here for the short time it was alive, um, use a minimum income standard, a negative income tax, um, to make sure there's a consumption floor under people, and then, use, you know, again, whether you agree with it completely or not, and I don't, I don't like all the work requirements attached to our safety net, but you could then incentivize work above the consumption floor. Again, is that a position any group here holds cohesively? No, I think the advocacy the mayors are doing is that they'd like some kind of basic income for their most um, uh, lowest income citizens who are struggling with immediate basic needs costs. Um, but the fact that we have a coalition and they can advocate and these positions are evolving um, is really important. So, I mean, it sounds like that's what you all need in Germany and France and in Europe is a, is a mayor's, you know, we need a, a world network of mayors for guaranteed income. Because, again, I think the basic point is at the municipal level is where the suffering is most visible. Um, the federal politicians can sit there and act like, it's all just a philosophical game, but try being in households where you don't have enough to eat and you're worried about keeping, I mean, you know, again, our child tax credit, a study just came out that showed baby's brain development advances when you give people a guaranteed income. There are so many um, positive things. And again, it's a conservative idea because it stresses that people have choice to what they're going to spend the money on, not, gee, I'll give you a, a a uh, EBT card so you can go out and buy food when what you really need is rent payment. Uh, so um, I don't, I, I hope that answers your question, Olaf, but I don't think that there's a, a monolithic movement towards universal basic income so much as minimum income and guaranteed income here in the U.S. I, I actually want to um, take that same question and, uh, and um, address it to Ava um, and the because I, I, I noticed that you also really focused on the fact that many of the existing programs are means tested. Are there opportunities in France for something a bit more universal and and what are some of the barriers to that? Uh, yes, so actually in France it's a bit complicated to really test a full universal basic income, especially at the local level, because in France like the legislative power is concentrated at the parliament, so a mayor cannot decide by his own to uh, bring uh, universal basic income in his city. Uh, it's against the law actually. So if you want to experiment with uh, basic income, you have to target low-income people in order to make it possible. So uh, 
actually the one of the department that I told you just before, uh, it's the case of the Haute Garonne. They wanted to experiment with a basic uh, income for youth, but really universal between uh, young people. So if you were between 18 and 24 years old, uh, you could have a basic income not regarding your financial situation. But then uh, the préfet, so I don't know how to explain it in the, the, in, in the American uh, way, but uh, in France, so you have like the, the mayor, you have the department, and above you have the préfet. And the préfet said that, no, it was impossible to experiment something like that because it's against the equality principle. So in France, if you really want uh, to experiment with a universal basic income, you need to change the law. And so it's because of that that actually we had like 18 departments in France that uh, proposed the bill to the parliament to make it easier and to change this law so they can experiment with something more universal and uh, unconditional as well. So I think one solution could be to go further in this way have a greater coalition in France uh, between mayors and departments that want to experiment with basic income. And maybe uh, we could as well think about a European solution because uh, above even the national level, we have the European level that can state that maybe we can experiment something like that. So yeah, maybe creating a network of uh, European mayor could be a great idea. Clearly, it is a multi-layered uh, and multi-step process uh, and politics. Mayors alone can cannot do, uh, cannot move mountains. So that seems to be common across all three nations we're highlighting today. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I, they can advance I, the conversation significantly. This is true, uh, and uh, and and the kind of public. Um, exposure that mayors have access to is in and of itself um, yes. an advantage. Agreed. Um, I'm so sorry, but uh, I, I mean, I actually have a few more questions, but um, I am going to need to bring this session to an end. I again apologize for the um, tech challenges as we started. This is an international um, uh, session, so the you know challenges that come with trying to do um, international um, sessions like these were very much part of our reality this morning. Sure. Um, and uh, I uh, just in closing, um, there the recording for this session will be available uh, when this broadcast ends, and also in the chat I posted the link to the YouTube um, of uh, the mayor's uh, the German mayor's um, uh, remarks uh, for those of you who may want to see it again more clearly, um, and do join us for our plenary session this morning, supporting babies ending child poverty, kind of apropos to the discussion we just had. Um, and uh, and there will be a Kumo space both at lunch, at, well, it may not be lunch everywhere, but right after the plenary session, we'll have it, uh, the Kumo space open for an hour. And then for the hour at the very end of the conference, we'll also have the Kumo space open um, for more informal networking. So. Um, I hope that some of you will join us there. And again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It was such a pleasure to have this kind of cross-continental conversation. Thank you very much for having us. We're very thank glad. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.